Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and our TV audience. As Sheila said, my name is Rick Barron, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be here today to introduce myself to you. For the next six minutes or so, I'm going to share some very personal experiences with you that have had a very tremendous impact on my life with the expectation that you keep them in the strictest confidence. <laughs> For the first, we'll go back almost 45 years. Do any of you remember learning to walk? I didn't think so. To tell you the truth, neither do I. But walking had a significant impact on me. I lived in Hawaii at the time, the land of black sand beaches, palm trees, and bare feet. Imagine learning to walk barefoot through the grass in Hawaii. Well, I got to live it. And as I began to take my first steps, my parents noticed something very peculiar. I walked on my toes. They surmised that the grass tickled my feet and really thought nothing of it. Years later, I would wear holes in the toes of my shoes without the heels ever touching the ground. The doctor said that I would outgrow it in time. By the sixth grade, my toe walking had become a liability. The kids had been calling me twinkle toes and ballerina for years. Well, these are not endearing terms for a preteen boy, and they hurt. I was ready to make a conscious effort to walk heel, toe, heel, toe, just as the doctors had predicted. But I soon discovered a disturbing reality that I was not able to do it. I couldn't understand why. I wanted to walk normally more than anything in the world. I did my exercises. I even wore casts on both legs for six weeks in an effort to lengthen my Achilles tendon, but nothing worked. You see, I'd taken every step so many times that the process of walking was buried deep in my unconscious mind. I walked without thinking without conscious awareness of the act. Think about it. When was the last time you gave any thought at all to the steps you take? I think it was Carl Jung that said, until we make the unconscious conscious, it will rule our lives and we will call it fate. Well, that certainly seemed to be true for me. I hadn't considered that the process of walking was made up of habits that I'd learned. I just thought that by willing it, I could change. The problem was that with every step I took, I was just practicing all of my bad habits. I was just becoming more and more comfortable with them. You see, I understood what needed to change, but it took years of practice for me to master the change I was after. It took a lot of work. It took repetition. If the things you keep doing aren't getting you the results that you want, you can change them. But first you need to know what to change. And then you need to practice the new way of doing things over and over again until it becomes as comfortable as the old way. And this is something that most people need help with. It will feel uncomfortable at first. But this is the secret to growth. Keep going. Push through the discomfort. That's how we learn. And ultimately, you'll become more comfortable with the new way of doing things. We learn new ways of doing things exactly the same way we learn the old ways, through repetition. Repetition is the mother of skill. Fast forward 36 years for another childhood lesson. This time, I'm watching Peter Pan with my granddaughter, Mia. That's right, I'm a grandfather, and I have been for almost 12 years. It's the absolute best job in the world. But I'll save that story for another time. Mia was working on potty training for the third time, 
and announced that she had to go to the bathroom. I asked her if she needed a stimulus, and she said, no, Pop, I'm a big girl now. She ran for the bathroom and closed the door. About 20 seconds later, the door came flying open, and she said, Pop, Pop, I can't unbutton my skirt. She was doing that wee-wee dance in the middle of the room, <laughs> so I went running over to help her, right? I unbuttoned her skirt, and it fell to the floor. Here's where the trouble started. Mia turned to run for the bathroom, tripped on her skirt, and launched herself face first into the side of the toilet. She cried for 40 minutes while we placed ice packs on her face to control the swelling. She fell asleep in my arms and woke up about an hour later. We typically spend the entire day together on Sunday. We hadn't even had our Captain Hook sword fight yet, but she said that she wanted to go home. I packed up her things and got her ready to leave. When I put her in the car, I hopped into the front seat and flipped down the rear view mirror so that I could see her face. She said, Pop, are you sad? I said, yes, Mia, I'm sad that you got hurt. She looked at me through the rearview mirror directly in the eyes and said, Pop, sometimes kids get hurt and there's nothing you can do about it. I said, you're right, Mia. Accidents do happen and there's no one to blame. I learned a very valuable lesson that day from a three-year-old about attitude. My attitude is a collection of my thoughts, feelings, and actions, and only I have control over it. Take the time to learn from your successes and your setbacks. Wake up every day making a decision to have a positive attitude and pick up your skirt. Okay. <laughs>